Yo, what's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday, uh, damn, September 29th. We got a couple more days to October, which is spooky season, so I'm excited about that. But hey, guys, how are we doing? Uh, this is our weekly live stream, an hour ahead of time, because I got a, a screener tonight for Venom 2, which I'm excited to check out and talk about in the coming days. But uh, so happy to be here tonight with uh, my co-host. We got a very very special guest, uh, a birthday guest that we'll be bringing on here in a little bit. But before we dive into tonight's episode and bring in all these wonderful folks, uh, make sure, when I'm first and foremost, for everyone that's watching live, how you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, do me a favor and make sure to like the video, share the video, and have a good time in the chat. We'll try to get to some of your live questions, concerns, comments, or what have you, and having a good time. So with all that being said, let me bring in my amazing co-host, who I've been going on this journey with since the beginning of the year, and couldn't be happier to have them as the, my co-host, starting off with with the one and only Amanda representing Canada. What's going on, Amanda? Hey, it's cold here, but I like oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. But That's I'm good. Sweater season, hoodie season. The yeah. best season, best of the best. best. So you've been yeah. doing good though. Yeah, yeah. I just caught up on some stuff today and uh, I'm gonna do some recording tomorrow. Busy, nice. busy October, but I'm October, excited. Amanda, we got so much yeah. to look forward to with the release of Venom this Friday, which we'll talk about. I know you're excited mm -hmm. for and uh, no time to die the next week and Halloween yeah. the following week and doing it so much, but I love it because yeah. this, this is the best, best time of the year. But yes. hey, Amanda, why don't you do us a favor and let the people know at home where they can find you and uh some stuff that you got coming up on your channel soon. Yeah, of course. Well, you guys can always find me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. I just uploaded my top five films from TIFF. It does include Dune, but guess what, guys? You're not going to know where the placement is, so go watch that video because everyone's going to be kind of surprised where I placed it. Um, but yeah, I have that. I have some what if stuff coming up, and then uh, some more reviews. The Guilty comes out, Titan comes out. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to all of that. And you guys can find it on my website, candidxcinema.com. Do it, guys. I, I got to check out that video because I want to know uh, where Dune ranks on that list. I know we talked about it last week, but I want to yeah. know where exactly. I know it wasn't, <laughs> I, I think I remember what your number one was, but I'm very mm. interested to see where Dune lands. But yeah. guys, check out Amanda's website, her YouTube channel. It's some amazing content, and you guys will be more than happy uh, when you see the amazing content she has. So definitely check her out, show her some love and some uh, you know, likes, shares, and all that fun stuff. So I uh, got my man representing the East Coast coming back, always one of our, uh, you know, my co hosts who always has a good time with us here. I'm talking about the one and only Chris from Taste Take. What's going on, man? Gang, 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 gang. What's up, my guy? <laughs> Doing good, man. How's that New York weather out there, man? Let's see. Let's see. Today was a cool little day. It was like okay. 70. Okay. Well, that's Fahrenheit for those, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, who knows what that is on the other the metric thing. But um, <laughs> we, we're, we're like holding on. We're like holding on for dear life to like a little scraps of good weather. So whatever we'll take. Gotcha, man. Well, what you been up to, Chris? How we, how we, uh, have you guys seen the Squid Game, by the way? This oh Netflix God, phenomenon. Yet. It's on my list. It's on my list, too. But yeah. I've heard it's yeah. like the most watched Netflix uh, series yeah. this year and it's going to blow the numbers out. So I got to, I got to watch it, but it's just so mm -hmm. much. Like a man, it's so much to catch up on. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like, how are you going to know that this random show is going to be good? Uh, I'll have yeah. to see it at some point. I heard it's good stuff, but who's got yeah. the time to? I need just two I, people. So much, <laughs> so much, man. But uh, Chris, man, why don't you let the people know where they can find you, my good friend? For sure. You can find me at Taste Take. So I do my YouTube videos. I do TV shows, movies, give you a little background on the stuff. It lets you know if I think it's worth checking out. Um, all the information is in the bio to this. And then if you want to contact me personally, my Instagram is also in there. <laughs> and if you want to tweet me nonsense, Twitter is also there too. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting this, this conversation going. We only got one more after this. So that's crazy. Here we are. Let's do it. Very crazy, man. And in, in this episode, I know you, you were happy because you got your boy uh, Ultron and, and or to say Vision and Ultron too. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I got my brought my boy today. Let's see what we got here. Hey, Look yeah. at wow. Ultron, <laughs> there he is. Always no up strings. to no good. <laughs> no strings on him. He was that uh, man. We'll, we'll get into it because I. This Ultron, Ultron was uh, pretty badass, more so than the movie. I'll just say that. But uh, we got a special guest. Came in fourth quarter, put me in coach. You know, I, they, they said I was injured for a little bit, but I can come <laughs> back. Uh, you know, this man here is is, is a fan favorite. Uh, so happy to have him on. Just celebrated a birthday. Always has some crazy, uh, incredible takes on his uh, YouTube, his Instagram, his TikTok. So happy to have him on. I'm talking about the one and only Michael from Black Gate Comic Geek. What is going on, my friend? 
time. Uh, wow, fan favorite. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have, man, I'm have, to, I'm have to bring the heat on for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> How we doing, birthday boy? But if you guys don't know, everyone in the chat, Michael just celebrated a birthday. So happy birthday yeah, to you, thank, my friend. Thank, thank, mm-hmm. thank you, thank you. Yeah, Monday was my yeah. birthday. 30, yeah. 30, 30, 36 years young. So there you go. There yeah. you go, man. How you been, though, man? How you good. been? I, I've been, I've been good. Just, just celebrating. Got a little bit of yeah. a hangover from yes, from last night. So. Yes, you should. <laughs> Yo, walking off, walking off. Yeah, in, injured hand from uh, going golfing the other day. So yeah, it's, yeah, got war, war wounds all over. <laughs> I was well, like, man, this, this is what turning thirty six is. Like, I'm, I'm hurting all over. Like, yeah, the injuries I last went, so long, Michael. When we get in our third, just like you know, a, a little bump into something lasts us for two weeks, man. It's just like, damn. Yeah, me and a couple of friends, we went pole dancing on Sunday, and even though mm-hmm. I'm not like hurting, like yeah. I feel stretched. I was just like. <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> sounds like a hell of a week, man. But I'm yeah, so glad yeah. you're joining us tonight, Michael. Hey, if you want to let the people know at home, this is the first time tuning in where they can find you, my friend. But I appreciate you, Elliot, for letting me on at the last minute. I know I hit you up like 10 minutes before you went went live. I was like, hey, can you, you got room for one more? So I appreciate you uh, for having me on. But yeah, you can find me on all social media channels under Black Gay Comic Geek. Actually, uh, funny enough, right when I hit up Elliot uh, about going live, I thought he was going to go live at 7 o'clock. So I, was re- so I was editing my review for this episode, and I was like, okay, I'll be done by the time we go live. And then I realized he was going live in like 20 minutes. I was like, oh, shoot. So be on the lookout for my review. It should be dropping after we go live. Uh, I'll finish editing and everything like that. And then also, yeah, you mentioned Squid Game. I need to check that out. I'm behind on a lot of stuff. I'm be checking out Venom tomorrow. I need to watch... Uh, why is the last man? I haven't seen that yet. Foundations on uh, Apple TV. Yes, yeah, a couple stuff that I need to uh, catch up on. But yeah, Black Gay Comic Geek, you can find me. So be on the lookout. Dude, it, it, it's so much. I don't even know the time of day. Um, it's so much stuff to catch up on. Why the last man? Is the, did you? I know you're a comic book. Did you read the comics uh, on that one, Michael? Why I, haven't, I, I, haven't, I haven't read it, no. But I did. Uh, I do own all of them, but I haven't yeah. read. I haven't read them, so it's okay. That's that's, that's the thing. It's that's okay. the thing with me. Like I'll buy yeah. stuff, and then it takes me a while like to them. actually get yeah, to get to it. <laughs> so I'll eventually, I'll get to why the last man. It's it's okay. I will say foundation for my sci-fi fans. That's been a really like fascinating show so far, visually and just the story and all that's been yeah. incredible. But before we dive into the episode, since there's no crazy news, just kind of roundtable style, uh, Amanda, anything new that you've been catching up on or revisiting or preparing for Halloween or any revisits of, of movies that uh, you're excited uh, for? I I watched Freddy vs. Jason for the last classic, time last night. Classic. Oh, I man. was I was very confused with Wait, everything. Was it, was it the first time or revisiting? It was it? my first first watch oh, so okay. yeah I, wow. try, okay. I try my best to like watch new ones and yeah, like a yeah. mixture of old ones like traditionally but yeah a friend of mine just said to watch Freddy vs. Jason so I'm like okay then I'm watching yeah, yeah. I'm like all right this is what it is so, so quick mini review did, did you enjoy the film and who were you rooting for in that movie Freddie's just so cool. He's, he's just so like he's cringy, <laughs> but yeah. he's fun. So yeah. I'm like, you're awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I was with Freddie for sure. It was really cool. It was a very two thousands yeah. movie. Much. Very, very Kelly <laughs> Rowland. Kelly Rowland. Oh, yeah. He was my favorite character. I was like, thank you so much yeah. for being realistic. So <laughs> she was awesome. But yeah. uh yeah, the kills were great. They were yep. so much fun. Uh but yeah, early 2000s movie. That's uh that that much last night. Freddie vs. So. Jason. I remember seeing yeah. that. I, so I'm a big horror fan. So like I remember mm-hmm. when that film came out, I was like anticipating that movie for the longest. It, and, and like you said, it's a, it's a 2000 film. There's nothing, you know, to to rank on the high rankings of those two. But of course, seeing those yeah. two icons was fun. It, it, yeah. Chris, I know you're not a big horror fan, but you have you seen Freddie vs. Jason, right? Yeah, but like yeah. when it was out. So like I have no, I don't remember anything about that movie. I forgot that <laughs> Kelly was in it, but what yeah. year did that come out? Like 2003, yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Four, yeah, it was 2003. Yeah, yeah, I saw it then, yeah. and then that was it. I forgot <laughs> all of it. And then wasn't there? What was it? Was it Jason in space or something? Jason X? Or something oh, like Jason. Dude. We don't. We don't speak that. Yeah, that <laughs> franchise went off the rails really fast. And he went to is hell. This, is this Halloween space. supposed to be like a real good thing? Like it's supposed to be a big deal? Like this next one. Halloween. Halloween kills. Halloween kills, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah man. Yeah. This, that's my guy. That's I'm my so favorite upset. slasher. Is Halloween. So I'm always for Michael, it's man. Tough. So good. I can't I'm wait. In there. Right. I'm in there. Well, I know uh, Michael. You're a big horror fan. Were you a big fan of Freddy vs. Jason, man? Uh, yeah. I saw that movie in theaters, and man, I know a lot man. of people. A lot of people don't like that movie. A lot of people thought it was cheesy, but I loved. 
I love Freddy versus Jason. And if yeah. I'm not mistaken, I think it made a lot of money at the box office. I'm not. I wouldn't I, be surprised. Yeah. To. I don't know. I don't, I know, why, I don't know why we never got a sequel because I was looking forward to it. Like, I, yeah. I, really, I really loved that movie. And like, I thought it was going to be like a, they were going to continue like Freddy versus Jason versus like Michael Myers or like, they or like yeah. I yeah. think Ash was going to be yeah. from uh, the Evil Dead was one rumored script to be out there, but unfortunately they, they just it. didn't do it. Who knows though? In the, in the in the world we live in, with reboots and sequels and TV series, who knows if they'll revisit those characters? Uh, but what about you, Chris? Man, what's what's anything you've been watching lately, or revisiting, or prepping for for the your favorite time of the year, Halloween? Well, my favorite time of the year is Halloween. Well, it's not. It's Christmas, but I love yeah. Halloween, but I just don't watch horror stuff. But I do love Halloween as like yep. a concept. I love Halloween. That's a concept. And you get candy. It's like a concept. concept. Yes. Candy. Yeah. Candy. candy. Yeah, exactly. What have I been watching or preparing to watch? That's nothing scary. Yeah. That's for sure. I did watch I did watch Lamb. We talked about this offline. Yes, um, quick quickly, uh Chris. Oh I know you're gonna probably I don't know if you're doing a review on it, but just quick thoughts on that film. I was supposed to see it on Monday, but I had some change of plans. But your thoughts on this uh this film that looked very, very interesting. I don't know how people think of these things. <laughs> it's, May 24, I, it's man. Yeah, it's like uh, unexpected. And then when I went to my screening, it was yesterday, and yeah. the director was there, the lead oh, actor wow. actress was there. Very cool. And like they're asking him questions, and I'm like, nobody want to ask the real question, like, because they're all like, oh, it shot so well, the yeah. scenery, da, da, da. I'm like, yeah. take me to what the character was feeling. I'm like, take me to the right. To, like the, they're the like, 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 we can't, we can't take audience questions today because of whatever time, or whatever. Not like I was going to embarrass myself and ask no questions anyway. Um, but I was like, we really want to know, like, how do we get here? It's it, it's crazy. It's probably not as crazy as you think it is gonna be, but it's still like. I haven't seen a movie like this in a long time. And I don't even know how to review it. I don't think I have to, <laughs> but I got to really sit down and have a talk with Jesus. <laughs> if, is there anything you can com compare it to? I know you don't have it. I know God. you're not a big horror, horror fan, but is there anything like remind you of- It's like, not a horror. In my opinion, it's not a not horror, horror at all. Yeah. There's nothing no scary in it. There's no yeah. jump scares. It's just like a, a movie. It's well shot. Yeah. You're you're, in, you're invested in it, but you just don't know where it's going. Right, right. And, and you're just like, okay. I'm here, but it's not. I would never call it a horror at all. Like interesting. Not at all. That's uh, that that in the trailer too. Uh, if you guys seen the uh, trailer for mm -hmm. Lamb, it, it doesn't really pose as a horror, but it does have like those horror vibes. Which I know A24 sometimes their trailers are a little bit. I don't want to say misleading, but I'll yeah. never forget. It comes That's at true. night. I thought that was going to be a straight up horror film, and that was like more of a house. Like you know, yeah. Parasite is yeah. Like Parasite's not a. It's not. It's not. A, did they call that a horror? Parasite. I, um, it, no, I think, I think it just felt more in the drama, suspense drama. But I know yeah. some of the trailers. That's, that's kind what of I, yeah, that's that's what I would call it. That's what I would yeah. call it. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, Michael, man, I know you're and always then, then, watching. Um, then, I got Venom tomorrow. tomorrow to see, and then we'll see. Same. I'm <laughs> yeah. so excited. I watched the first Venom like two nights ago, so I haven't seen I the first Venom since. Yeah, I haven't seen the first Venom since. I have it on <laughs> Blu-ray <laughs> with special I features. I didn't. Uh, I didn't Amanda, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm, still, I'm, hoping. I'm still disappointed. The second one isn't rated R, but we'll see. Same. I'm trying to get that money. The first is R, and then this one is not. The no, the first one's PG-13. The first one's R, yeah. yeah. Oh, it should have been R. It should have been R. It should have been, yeah, it should have been. Yeah. Michael, man, what about you, my friend? I know you're always watching some new animes and all that stuff, man. What you been uh, catching up to lately? Um... Honestly, like I've mostly been, yeah, like like you mentioned, I've been watching catching up on like My Hair Academia, mm -hmm. and uh, there's another anime called Two Year Eternity. That yeah, I'm, that it's so good, like it's, it's 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 like the anime version of uh, what what is the show uh with uh Sterling Sterling K Brown? I can't think of the name of it all. I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. This is us. This is us. This is us. There you go. It's because like every <laughs> every episode will have you crying. Like oh. got you, got you. <laughs> <laughs> us, but it's but it's so it's but it's so good and uh then i just been uh i just been watching and reading a lot of like fantasy novels mostly like i haven't even been yeah. watching anything i've just been listening to like audiobooks nice. and things like that so yeah i'm behind on so many so many shows but it's, it's yeah crazy, i mean I'm, I'm, I'm this week i'm playing catch up since i'm off yeah. work until you know i took the whole week off for my birthday so there you go there you yes. go awesome man <laughs> yeah it's it's been yeah for me same thing as far as just trying to catch up on things i've actually been re-watching secession i don't know if you guys watch secession on nice. hbo that one of the best yeah. shows if not the best like drama on tv Need right now oh so fantastic and season three is in like in two three weeks or something like that so i'm super Here's stoked 17. for that 
Oh, uh, Silver Scale yeah. just mentioned Midnight Mass. I'm like, that's another one I need to watch. I need to watch that too. Yeah, that, Amanda, you saw it, right? I remember. I, I, saw I your, did. Your, I was yeah. in the middle of it. A little bit of middle. Yeah, I was in the middle. I love Flanagan like to death. I think he's brilliant, but Jeez. it just wasn't. I don't know. There were some beats, but that finale didn't yeah. really hit the mark for me. But yeah. leading up into all the events and the the, the monologues were pretty long, yes. but <laughs> pretty good. But Michael, yeah. I know, you, especially with your whole mantra of blood and there's no sex, but there's a lot of blood. I'll just say that. And I think it'll be right up your alley, man. It's, it was <laughs> so oof, Mike Flanagan is, is hidden on another level, but that was even, good. Even, even like Squid Game, like I've heard a lot of people watch say. That, man. I heard man. a lot of people. I heard a lot of people say Alice in Borderland was better. So and I, I said Alice in Borderland, and I saw Alice in Borderland. Yeah, I reviewed yeah. it, and it's, it's Alice in Borderland was pretty right. good. So yeah. I'm like. The fact that somebody said, oh, Squid Game isn't as good as Alice in Border, and it kind of disappoints me a little bit, but I'm still mm -hmm. checking it out. Since it's like the highest grossing. Yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be the most oh, popular yeah. show on Netflix, which is bananas. Um, yeah. and, and Netflix. speaking of Netflix, did you guys watch any of the to doom, to dum or whatever, the trailers? Did you guys uh, get excited about that, Amanda? I I was excited for Cowboy Bebop, to be honest. I never watched yeah. the anime, but like neither, watching neither. that little like – Opening, I was like, "Yo, this looks yeah. so cool!" And then, like the yeah. dog, the dog is just so precious. Yeah, that's that's, that's how, you how you get people <laughs> put a dog in it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chris? You excited for uh, what do we get? Stranger Things, Ozark, which is my jam. I can't wait mm. for that. Uh yeah. What about you, man? What you would you would get you excited for the To Doom special that we got last week? Bridgerton. Bridgerton <laughs> season two. Same. Yeah, right. It's so it's so far away though. I gotta be patient. But, yeah, um, yeah. And then they, they lost they lost your boy, so everybody mad. But um, yeah, yeah, that was cool. And then you know the harder they fall, is that that was part of that, right? Wasn't yeah, that? Yeah. Um, I didn't get to yeah, see the Stranger trailer. Things four trailer. I was kind of like, I don't. It's too far away. Yeah. I don't want to watch it yet. Like it's. It was all right. It didn't really blow my socks off. This is Hunted Story, I guess. Hunted House situation with the upside down with okay. Harper still somewhere out there. But I'm going to see yeah. it. But I need so to long. see that trailer and I need to see the trailer, the uh, other one with uh, Leo. They That was part of it too. Don't look right? up. Yeah. Don't look yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check that out. It. <laughs> what about you, Michael? We got, I know you're a big uh, sci fi fan. The Witcher season two. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sandman. Oh. The inside, the, 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 the cartoon looked cool too. The inside job, the the one about the conspiracy theories, that looked. Cool. Oh, I didn't see that. It's, it's a Netflix thing. It, it looks like a, it looks like Rick and Morty kind of like animation mm -hmm. style, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like this like animated it's show, I guess, where it's like there's like some secret society that controls all the conspiracy theories. Like they're they're behind it all. Yeah, that's, that, that was that was on the uh, Netflix thing too. Yeah, check that one out. What about you, man? Is there anything catch your eye, Michael? Well, yeah, I saw. I saw. I didn't see all of the to Dooms. Uh, I didn't see like the Stranger Things uh, trailer, but the yeah. uh, but the uh, trailers I did see. Like, I'm excited about the harder they fall. Like, super yes. excited. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, 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 Sandman. I'm. That looks and I, and I actually, yeah. actually just finished reading like the the whole comic series. Nice. Yeah, and everything yeah. like that. So, like, uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see what they do with the live action Sandman and just like the production for like that first trailer. I was like, yes, mm -hmm. like this looks. This looks like it's gonna be dope. And uh, what else did, did, did I see? Oh, yeah, Cowboy Bebop. I've never seen the anime. People are like mm -hmm. shocked. Like, oh, my God, you never seen? Yeah, fact, I wasn't <laughs> yeah. watching anime back then, so I never yeah, yeah. I never watched Cowboy Bebop. But just the the way that uh, the what I saw from the, the teaser that they showed, yeah. I'm like, I'm excited. Yeah. You know, John, John Cho, he definitely should have gotten more work and more clout. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to see him get, yeah. Yeah. getting his shine in this. So I hope so, man. I hope, is it this year or is that next year, the, uh, the Bebop? <clears throat> Uh, next year, Maybe I, ne I think it's next year. Probably it could so. be, yeah. Yeah. Well, Netflix, you know, the richer they get. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. Though. I'm excited for the rest of this year with uh, with The Witcher because I love the first season, The Witcher and Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. uh, this is fantastic. So yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm uh, Netflix is always coming with the with the hits. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Netflix always doing its thing. But hey. Netflix. Let's move on to Disney. We got a we got an episode tonight, which uh, I, I think was. Um, Ultron, I'm gonna need you to come into the MCU this version of Ultron because man, <laughs> man, man, he made Thanos look like he, he had no imagination. That <laughs> Thanos is like on a kid level compared to what Ultron was on, giving peace to the whole multiverse. But Amanda, starting with you first, your thoughts on this episode? Honestly, it could be my favorite episode to be honest, just because Ooh, the last, yeah. I think the last three. Mm -hmm. No, two. The last two just didn't really like stick with me. Like nothing really stood out. I wasn't vibing with it. And then this one was just like you have Ultron in the right way, and it's animated, Jeez. so you can show so much more. And that's what I loved about it. Um, but yeah, this could be like top three. I'll I'll say top three for sure out of this season. 
for me. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Chris, man. This is your boy, uh, Vision, having his uh, Vision's quest, per se, going on, taking on the galaxies, putting peace in the world as Tony wanted him to be. But, man, your, your thoughts on this episode, bro? Yeah, for sure. You, I mean, you guys gassed it in the in the in the chat. You were like, this "Oh yeah, I hit crazy. it." Yeah, like at that point, like I got to see it late. Like, I've been trying to like catch it early, but I'm like, "All right, it's gonna be good." I tr I trust you guys, and it was it was good. And and unfortunately, I only got to watch it right before the streams. But this is like one that I need to like revisit because it's like there's so many things happening. So yeah. I need to go back and watch it again. But yeah, I, it, it's definitely top three for me. I don't know where it stands. Yeah. I gotta do the whole ranking thing, but it's yeah, easily yeah. top yeah. three. Um, it was. It took a more serious tone of sport, especially compared to last week, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's interesting to see you know Barton and and, and uh, Widow as the Bro, <laughs> as the line of defense, like yeah. shooting guns and, and arrows. But it's so cool. It's interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot. A lot of cool shit happened in this episode. Probably the coolest yeah. shit happened in this episode. I couldn't agree with um, you more, bro. Yeah, yes. We'll, we'll get into it. <clears throat> The Watcher coming out of the shadows, uh, getting getting some work put in, man. Uh, Michael, man, tossing it to you. Just your uh, official initial thoughts after watching this episode, my friend. Man, this episode was dope. Like I <laughs> fuck, I love this episode. Like this, I, yeah. this was my favorite episode out of all of them. Like for the longest time, episode three was my favorite episode. This surpassed that by a long shot. Like, yeah. and it just goes to show like how sinister of a villain Ultron could have been in the MCU. Like, Josh, uh, we didn't pretty much yes. play him as a joke. He's dropping puns and giving witty banter. Like, yeah. no, Ultron yeah. is a Even, like, you think about the comics, like, Ultron is a scary fucking droid. Yes. I was about yeah. to say dude, but he's not a dude. <laughs> and, and this was basically their way of, like, redoing that and showing how formidable Ultron could have been. And and funny enough, I saw a meme on Twitter that was like, yeah, Thanos' goal was to half the entire universe, but he didn't really, like, he ended up getting halved himself. Like, yes, and, and, I and, tried. And, and, and also kind of goes to show, like, how, like, some, cause sometimes we forget, like, how power, because Ultron was in the body of Vision, like, yeah. how powerful Vision actually is. Because every, because yes. even in, like, Infinity War, he was getting washed by Thanos' henchmen. Left and right. Yeah. yeah. Like that whole movie. Yeah. But yeah, you give that power to Ultron, he took out that with, in the Infinity Stones, with at that like he took him out easily mm -hmm. and like yeah there was just so much about this episode like the way it was shot the production back like there was certain scenes and moments like it just looked gorgeous mm -hmm. and like i feel like this episode also did way better in establishing the bond and chemistry and relationship between hawkeye and natasha than all of the mcu like the mcu is just Thank constantly you. telling us the yeah. relationship yes. but we yes. never yes. seen it until now so yeah I, I love yeah i love this episode the fight between Ultron and, oh, and yeah, like all yeah. of it, like, oh, yeah, yeah. all of it. Oh yeah. All of it. This episode was damn near perfect for me. You, you guys have said it all. And, and before we go yeah. into the episode, just quickly, Michael, because we haven't had you on since episode two or three earlier on the season, just kind of your, and I know you have your reviews on your channel. Definitely check them out guys. Links in the bio, but just up until that point from the last time you was on, how, how have you been collectively feeling about the show just in general up until this point of that of this season? I mean, all Overall, like, I mean, I'm enjoying the series, but it like it wax and wanes for me. Like, there's some moments where I'm like, oh, like I like like I said, episode three is my favorite. I love episode yeah. two, but like episode one and eh, episode mm -hmm. episode five or uh wait, episode five was Marvel Zombies. I enjoyed Marvel yeah. Zombies, but I was like, eh, it could have been it mm -hmm. could have been better. Yeah. And then like last week's episode, I had fun with it, the frat, Thor. frat boy Thor and Captain yeah, Marvel. Yeah. I was like, but something about it, like. I'm not. I'm not loving it. I didn't love. Yeah. I didn't love it. And then it also, I feel like out of all the episodes, last week's episode left me with the most questions. Mm -hmm. And when I started going down that rabbit hole, I started. I was like, well, "What about this? What about the, like this? Doesn't make sense. This doesn't." Yeah. And like, I'm like, if I'm doing this, that means I didn't really like that didn't episode like that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. yeah, I mean, but overall, I'm still like, I'm still, I'm still enjoying the concept and seeing these like certain things play yeah. out that we never really got to see in the MCU. Mostly because like they didn't have like they didn't have Captain Marvel when like the first. Uh, Iron Man came up, so, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm I'm enjoying to see the like the cohesiveness of the universe if they did have all the rights to these characters from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? Well, well said, man. And, and it has I've, I've been really enjoying the series, and we'll talk about that obviously next week. Just overall thoughts, but it's it has its peaks and valleys. Uh, but this episode, like you all said, was just it just hit on another level, and it really. And, and if you guys remember when we first talked about this series when we were watching Loki, my fear was that this show is going to end up making the live action look kind of little lackluster <laughs> with some characters. And this Ultron is way more superior than the Ultron we got in uh, Age of Ultron. And, and like you said, Michael, Nat and Clint, 
I think they dropped the ball. They, we should have got a movie with them. We should have got a movie with those two characters to, to show mm-hmm. that bond, to show just how bad. I mean, literally, if we don't get some of these arrows that we saw in this episode and, and Clint's mm. own show, I'm going to be very upset with Marvel. Because, I mean, my <laughs> man had arrows that I'm just like, what, 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 what's going on, Marvel? But this, yeah, this episode sure. was hitting on another level. But, you know, kicking it all off, uh, Amanda, kicking it to you first in regards mm-hmm. to just opening up. We hear the watcher say first and foremost, this particular story breaks his heart. I'm like, man, you after the end of this episode, you got more than your heart broken. I mean, my man Ultra I was crushing your head, breaking, throwing you through the multiverse. So he got he got some licks in this episode. But we see immediately uh from the opening and just your thoughts again, Amanda, just seeing that and Clint being badasses, being the the shield top agents that we know them to be. And and granted, MCU I think they did a good job with Nat, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Black Widow. But as a as a through line and as a character, I think she was a badass. Clint, on the other hand, has been kind of <laughs> sidelined the entire MCU, minus the show in a couple of next or two months. But your thoughts yeah. on this opening sequence of Nat on the bike? We got my man with the Winter Soldier arm uh, <laughs> just going to work. What did you think about this opening sequence? Well, I love Jeffrey Wright as a voice actor. I think he's yes. been killing it. At- in every single episode so i love that i love that we get to see you know like more development on like for his character as well so that was great Mm -hmm. it was a solid opening and the way that they kind of like tied it in at the end obviously with uh well we'll talk about after um but nat and clint like i said before like they should have had after iron man 2 there should have been a movie with the two of them i personally think just like as an like like a Nat solo and then tie in Clint to show that kind of relationship. I think that's what should have happened before. Yeah. I love the action. I love seeing them be badasses. They're both awesome. When when Clint was invisible, I was like, what? The invisible he cloak. Could, <laughs> that could happen. I was like, what? Where has that been? But like Harry, was, Harry, Harry, Harry Potter from. crossover. Yeah, that's I don't exactly know what I thought from, of. I'm like, it was dope. <laughs> the Deathly Hollows happen. No, I'm, um, but yeah, this was cool. Like Clint yeah. Barton was wicked awesome in this like yes when his arm came up everything just like the coolest fight scenes for the both of them their banter their connection you felt it and it wasn't forced i yep. felt like in the mcu in certain films it was very forced because everyone knows that they have that kind of relationship so it didn't really flow for me but this within one episode they nailed the characterizations for both of them again and it just it breaks my heart that we could not have that and we yeah. we can't now because She's dead. So, yeah. like, no. <laughs> she's dead. So. And, and ScarJo's not coming back. So. Exactly. Yeah. No way. No other yeah. prequel. No, but, no, yeah. No. <laughs> but, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I, I assume Marvel, this is like a We're Sorry uh, tour in, in Phase 4. I think everything <laughs> that we miss with Natasha and, and Clint is going to be given to us by Kate Bishop and uh, um, Yelena. Yeah. I think they're going to – and they're going to do that with She-Hulk. They're going to probably make all the wrongs for Hulk. They just they're, they're like I said they're on the I'm sorry tour for phase four. Yeah. But Chris, man, saucing it to you on this idea of uh, Black Widow and and Hawkeye being so and and you might feel like they you know been used properly. I, but I think this 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 show shows us there could have been so much more with these dynamic duos as we see this opening sequence here. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, I think the Widow has been been treated fairly in in all yeah. the movies besides like her movie being late. Like that's fine. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. and I told you last week, I don't care about Hawkeye at all. I don't hate him, but I just yeah. I don't care about him. But like mm-hmm. seeing this episode, then like of course it's impossible now. But like I would have rather his Hawkeye show been a Black Widow and Hawkeye show, just like how like yeah. you yes. know the, the you know the Falcon and you know Winter Soldier was a show. Yeah. Like that that's mm-hmm. what I want to see. Like oh, Hawkeye, sure. maybe he can carry the show, maybe. But I would it would be a guaranteed if if it was ScarJo and and the Widow along yeah. with them, just to yeah. see like that 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 type of angle, like the mortals of the Avengers, like how they yeah. you know are, are navigating. So mm-hmm. and in the, in the episode, I thought it was cool, but I didn't understand how we got these abilities. Like I guess I don't know if I missed that. I was like, like are they explaining <laughs> any of this? Like he's invisible. He lost his arm. I was just like, is this like is it Bucky or like or who is? <laughs> um, but yeah, it it was just cool to see. And I think the ScarJo impersonator is doing okay like that's spot that's on yeah, yeah killing it spot on yeah if they uh if they recast scar joe you know, <laughs> uh, i think lake lake bill i think is the, the actress that's, that's voicing her if i'm not mm-hmm. mistaken uh but yeah chris i, I totally agree with you man I, I mean i don't know it may be michael tossing it to you man i know there's a, obviously an age of ultron comics i don't know uh i think they role reverse some of the characters because i think it was black widow and um and, and moon knight if i'm not mistaken kind of going through some of that narrative but your thoughts on this opening sequence of the action and uh these two 
dynamic duos being the best that we've seen, even uh, more so in live action. Uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, I love even the opener of this episode, like when you get to see more from Uatu the Watcher and how he talks about mm -hmm. how he's seen multiple different universes, but it's this specific universe that makes him the most sad. So yeah, yeah I like, I, and you know, Jeffrey Wright, like, come on, it's a phenomenal actor. So I love getting yeah. more of his character yeah. and his performance. And I, mm -hmm. I'm actually hoping that this show, because they are saying that it is canon to the MCU, that this will lead into we us seeing a live action version yeah, of man. Uatu voiced by <laughs> yes, Jeffrey sir. Wright. Yes, sir. So, uh, I would cross this other hand, but it hurts. So just, <laughs> so just the one hand. Cross, 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 your toes. Yeah, cross, cross, toes. cross my toes, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like the way this episode opened, like like I said, like just seeing how badass these two human characters are within the MCU and also more specifically Hawkeye because, yeah, they shown it with Black Widow. But the, the, part of the reason why a lot of people like Natasha's Black Widow more so than Hawkeye is because we've seen more of her. We've seen mm -hmm. her in Iron Man 2. We've seen her in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. We've yep. seen her in so many. And then even in like Avengers, she's get, she gets the bulk of the scenes, whereas yep. Hawkeye, Clint, like he gets nothing. And mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like, essentially he can do what she can like they can do the same exact things like obviously yeah, she's better than him like she can fight better than him but yeah. like in terms of like skill sets they're both badass and so i'm i'm glad we got to see that in this episode and yeah like you mentioned i want to see like the arrows that he has in this episode like i need to you see better. that in the hawkeye in the <laughs> hawkeye series and yeah like uh go, and also going to another thing that you mentioned earlier it, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing that not even just marvel but like dc mortal kombat like why is it that in animation, they give us way better characterizations than they do in live action. Like, get the same people that write your animated properties, get them to write your live action movies. Because even not not even just in this episode, but like episode three with uh, mm. Natasha and everything like like we got yep. more yep. of the relationship between Nick Fury and yep. Natasha and why yep. he trusts her so much than we've gotten in all of the MC. Like, it's just so much things that we've gotten in this show. That yeah. we didn't get in the MCU. And it's not even just because they didn't have the rights to the character. No, they had Nick Fury and Natasha from the beginning. But yeah, mm -hmm. we never really seen any of the relationships. Same thing with Clinton. Like, I want to see more of that. But mm -hmm. it's like now it's kind of too late because most of these characters are gone. So yeah. You, you said it perfectly, man. I don't know what the what why is there the disconnect between a lot and not necessarily a disconnect, but I totally agree with you. Some of these animations are so much better than live action. And I mean, you just mentioned bringing some of those people in. Uh, Dave Filoni is a perfect example of someone yeah. doing all this stuff in Star Wars and what he's been doing with Mandalorian and what we're going to get with uh, future stuff that he's working on. So I think it might not always translate well from someone that's working from animation to come live action, but. And more times than not, it, they know story, they know these characters, and, and again, no disrespect to live action directors and people putting in time and work. But you're so right, Michael. It seems like there's superiority, uh, superiority with these co comic mm -hmm. books and animation than so in the live action. This episode really proved that we were, we're missing so much backstory from Clint and Natasha, and ah, it, it, it makes me sad. It makes me sad. But we we got this at least now that we can uh, love and watch on repeat. But as we move forward with the episode, we see the events kind of play out within this universe. The same thing that happened, the, the ultimate villain of the MCU, Tony Stark, and his plan uh, falling yes, apart. But we see, <laughs> Yes, he is, my friend. But we see the the destruction of the world vision comes to life he takes over there's nukes all over the place the world is is uh, is a ray and we see that clint and natasha have the quinjet and they were able to kind of escape the uh, the aftermath of all of that uh but let's let's talk about a moment here that i would have loved to have seen live action uh but more so in this episode uh amanda we get thanos coming in from infinity war mm. sniffing the air my man, Vision says, oh, fascinating. And within 0.2 seconds, which I thought was kind of funny because, again, Michael, you mentioned he was getting waxed in Infinity War. So it was funny to see this like, version of Vision kicking some ass, and particularly Thanos uh, in this in this scene. But, Amanda, your thoughts on Mr. Thanos coming in with his uh, quest just being split in half? I literally could not <laughs> stop laughing when it happened. I think it's like my favorite thing ever, like to ever happen because he gave us so much shit in Infinity War and Endgame and I'm like, he just got split in half. Split in so half. it was the funniest thing ever. This episode, and this is what I'm going to say, made me hate Age of Ultron more than I already I'm do almost in the same boat with you, Amanda. I'm <laughs> like, almost in the same boat with you. Because <laughs> literally, when they went back and you saw like the spear and you saw Tony, the villain, yeah. and you saw all of that, and I was like, oh, they're going this way. And then mm -hmm. you see Vision in all his glory. You see this scene, and I'm like, 
we could have had better things happen and uh, it just didn't. So it made me bitter. And then I laughed. Same. So there we go. That's where it was. <laughs> now, Chris, we, we talked about it. It was last week or the week before. We, I, I'm not a, I don't hate Ultron, but it could have been a lot better as Amanda said, but I know you're, you like the film, uh, which, you know, you know, we'll, we'll revisit it one day, but man, your, your take on Mr. Vision taking out Thanos with, with ease in this moment, man. Yeah, I mean, I used to hate it too. But I just had to, I just had to, you know, talk to myself about it. Like, let's yeah, just yeah. give us another chance. And then I was like, all right, this is, this is changing things. I mean, I guess because yeah. Avengers one was so epic, and then yeah. when Ultron came, hard to follow up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was in that same camp, and then I started watching it more, and I was like, that shit used to always come on like TNT or some shit mm -hmm. like, all the time on concert. Yeah, so I was like, it gotta be. Yeah. Let me just see what's up. And then yeah. I realized that you know, Vision is a poet. So yeah. um yeah, this <laughs> scene, this is this is probably the only scene in the whole series where I like I was like verbal, like I literally saw I was like, oh shit, like out loud. I was like, <laughs> like I don't I was I couldn't they got they they set it up perfectly, like oh Thanos is coming, like what's this gonna be like? What kind of fucking speech is he gonna give? And they're like, No, no, I'm not here for you. Like erase this dude, give me the stones. That was it. It made me think of the, the I always talk about that apocalypse scene where Magneto tells Apocalypse, don't don't you know, don't save these men. And Apocalypse is like, I'm not here for these men. I'm here to talk to you. And melts the guys at the factory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like with this. He's like, I'm not here to like have a discussion with you. Like, just, yeah. I'm here for these, you know, these stones. And I, th I thought yeah. it was fire. I 100 agree, and also to uh, pound the pavement. I, I said this in my review earlier, and I told totally the only thing that I didn't like about this version of Ultron that James Painter wasn't yeah. back in the voice, and the voice sounded. I know they're trying was, to like emulate it, but it's yeah, they're trying to emulate it. It, 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 yeah. it, it did yeah. not sound close. That's probably the only as... voice actor that I or whoever that was, and no disrespect to them, but that's the only one that didn't feel like they were able to capture the. the mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I will give Ultron that that voice was badass. I'm not gonna lie, even with the jokes of James yeah. Painter, I thought that that voice was dope. Yeah. Yeah, James Bader um, was perfect casting. I just wish they 100, did something. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Michael, tossing it to you, man. Your thoughts on just uh, Mr. Age of Ultron or Ultron <laughs> Vision taking out Thanos with so much ease. But yeah, uh, when I didn't laugh like a man did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 when, yeah. when it happened, I was just like, oh, <laughs> that, that was that. That was my exact. And funny <laughs> enough, like it kind of validated me in the sense because I was like, there's so many ways they could have taken out Thanos in Infinity War. Like, remember the moment? Where uh, Wong opened up the sling ring uh -huh. and one of his henchmen, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, his henchmen got his hand cut off. I was like, yeah. "Why does the Doctor Strange do that when they when they're fighting on Titan? Like, open up a sling ring, chop <laughs> off his arm, and boom, you got the you got the gauntlet. Like, there's yeah. so many other ways that they could have taken out the. And this goes to show, like, exactly, yeah, but, <laughs> like, but I, but I, but I, enjoy, I, I appreciate it and enjoyed like just to see like the killer instinct of Ultron, like how he just. Really, just took out Thanos so instantly, and and, and like I just thought it, was, I thought it was great. And uh, one thing I, I, I was like, I, I I was like, I just really want to see like, because I know Ultron is like an AI, and so like you can always come back. I'm like, I want to see him come back in the MCU. And it didn't make me yeah. hate. It didn't make me hate Age of Ultron. Like I like Age of Ultron. I don't <laughs> dislike Age of Ultron. I just know it could have been better. And yeah. I think the main reason I like Age of Ultron because I know, like, essentially, Age of Ultron set up like everything that we're seeing now was pretty much set up There's in Age of Ultron. So, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without, without, yeah. without that, like, without yeah. Age of Ultron, we wouldn't have what we have now. So that's the main mm -hmm. reason, also. And then also, all, all the other stuff that we've gotten has made Age of Ultron more important subsequently. Especially yeah, WandaVision. Wanda yeah, WandaVision. Especially, made especially, yeah. Wanda, especially yeah. WandaVision. So, mm -hmm. and I, but it also, but it did make me go, like, look at Age of Ultron and be like, uh, this is what we could have gotten. Like, what if? <laughs> what if, right? Yeah, what, exactly. yeah, basically, what if? Yeah, the exactly biggest what if. if. <laughs> the biggest what if of all time. No, I, I completely agree with you there. Uh, what you guys are saying. Uh, and, and Age of Ultron, it, it, it did set up a lot of things, but that's my problem with the film. Just thinking about it as a whole, it was a setup film. It's like Ultron, like Michael said, deserved he deserved two films, like a two Avenger arc type of story, just because he is so integral to AI and what he could have done. But instead, like you know, Chris said, and, and Michael just said too, it set up. Civil War, which showed the separation of the Avengers to set up Infinity War to show them, you know, losing. But Ultron mm -hmm. should have. And I hope you're so right, Michael, that 
he's somewhere out there. He is AI. He's somewhere in a, yeah. I thought when WandaVision, he was going to come into the white vision, but who knows? I, I hope he's somewhere out there as well as Zola. Zola's still out there too, yes. especially after this episode. But mm -hmm. moving back into this awesomeness, we see him getting the Infinity Stones and going on, like I said, all pun intended, his own visions quest of taking out not just this world, but many other worlds uh, around the galaxy and then the multiverse as we see him going to Asgard and, and going to all different types of planets and just wrecking shop, which was just uh, bananas to see. Am I frozen here? Um, yeah, I still see the, stone. I see the, the stones. Yeah. No, you're, yeah, I see you're the good. stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're good. You may be cutting out. Yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah, you're, now. Little, yeah, now you're a little frozen. <laughs> now you're choppy. <laughs> hey, well. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, uh, oh, no. oh, yeah, Ultron. Ultron is destroying the stream. <laughs> yeah, Literally, say, he heard us talk, like, talking shit about Ultron. <laughs> Ultron came in and, and, and wrecked the stream. <laughs> Shout out to Ultron. <laughs> I don't even Literally. know where I left off at. Uh, but uh, toss something to you, man. In regards mm. to just seeing Vision going through his quest of taking out Asgard and Sakar and uh, um, I can't remember the planet from. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but Sand, also Xandar. Xandar. Yeah, yeah. E yeah Eagle's yeah, planet Eagle, just seeing yeah. all of that destruction. What did you think about that? It was so cool to see all of that. You see every single place that we've seen in the MCU, you know, and I just think, especially Asgard got me because, like, I love Asgard so much. And then mm -hmm. just, like, took down the castle. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, no, yeah. he's going to do that. So that's when it hit me. I'm like, he does not care. And it was cool. I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. let's cause all the destruction everywhere. So he's a badass. And that's what I love to see. Um what we could have gotten, you know, I'm uh, going to keep saying that, but it was cool to see yeah. like all the places, especially um, in, you know, through animation. I think they did a beautiful job in this episode and the animation just was stunning. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael, this is hilarious. The day of Ultron. That's what it should have been called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers, the day and hours of Ultron. That is hilarious. Chris, uh, <laughs> thoughts with you, man. As we see Ultron again, as Amanda said, just going through all these familiar places and just wrecking shot, man. It's like there's no fight back at all. It's just like Vision's just, he's a beast. Your thoughts, man? Yeah, you know, I love my little callback. So I was all oh, about yeah. seeing all the, all the world. So I thought that was dope. And then I guess we're about to see Marvel pull up. And I'm like, first of all, I'm like, Ugh. and I'm a Marvel fan. And I don't, I yeah. don't know why. But I'm like, don't use her to be like this clean Captain Sabre Ho, man. Yeah, <laughs> the exactly. The like, what, like, don't act like she could just come through. And then, yeah. but then how they did it here was kind of dope, how we got to the core. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I thought it was cool. I agree with you. Captain Marvel, I think she came in a wreck shop for a little bit, taking them to the core, like you mentioned. But they didn't, go to, they, like, they didn't touch on, like, Vormir, right? They didn't. No, they, did. they didn't. I wonder how he, uh, how Thanos, I guess. Get rid of that cause... place. My God, of all, of all the worlds. Just yeah. get rid of I know. I guess I'm Red to Skull. I was going to say, but he wouldn't need to go there because I mean, he already has the Soul Stone. So. Also true. Uh, right. Very true. Very true. But uh, my... for the rest of <laughs> <laughs> No one can go back in no another one can go universe. There. <laughs> but your thoughts, Michael, on seeing this this whole thing. And again, uh, I guess his callback, he took him, took him taking uh, Ultron to the core, I guess is a uh, Ultron reference of itself because they wanted to destroy the Earth's core. But your thoughts mm -hmm. of seeing off this, uh, this whole sequences of scenes here, man. But yeah, I, th I thought this whole sequence was like beautifully rendered and everything. Like, like I don't know if they increased the budget for this episode because I know the animation style is technically the same as all the episode, but just something about something about this episode just felt different in terms of like the way they animated yeah. it and the, cr and the crafting and all. That's a good and point. Like, yeah, the, like even the shot that you're showing on screen right now, like all of this, like it just looked great and like yeah. it gave me a lot of sinister vibes showing like. The, the villainy of Ultron and him going around mm -hmm. destroying essentially the nine realms, basically. And, 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 mm -hmm. and yeah, the fight between him and Carol, like, yeah, it, it, I, I like how, even though Carol ended up being defeated by the end of this, like they still put some respect on Carol's name at the, at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Cause I mean, she was yeah. created mm -hmm. by an infinity stone. Yeah. So yeah, it, it took Ultron a little bit of work to get rid of her, but part of me is still just like, she's got to still be alive. Right. Like, the planet exploded. Like she should still be alive. She she her whole thing is absorbing energy. She should still be out there somewhere. True. But I I, I love that the whole the whole sequence just going through the MCU and them mm -hmm. just you know Ultron just taking them out like it was nothing because he essentially with the Infinity Stones he is the greatest power in the universe. So yeah.
I totally agree. And that, and that's that's a good point you bring up too much. The the budget did look like significantly not that the other so episodes nice. looked poor, but yeah, the yeah. animation was just like stunning and just again just going from all these different planets and, and the styles and the and choices, the use of color that they use was just fantastic. So I totally agree with you there. And I wonder if and the music, well, like yeah, the, yeah, this yeah, episode, just, this episode just felt different. Yeah, which yeah. makes me just even more excited for the finale. If they brought this out for this, I can only imagine what next week has to But is it is next week the, I thought there were ten episodes, not nine. They they it's, cut the, yeah they uh, yeah it's nine oh, mm-hmm. boo yeah they cut I know it like COVID I guess with everything and then they're gonna have uh ten next year for season two and I think season one premiere will be what ten of what episode ten would have been or what one of the episodes would have been in the yeah. series which I think they said was supposed to be like more of a funny episode but you know we'll see we'll come to that uh but we see Mister Ultron here has uh had his has his Thanos moment where he's just like this is it I guess I'll go on a farm and uh, chill out <laughs> but he has this higher level of consciousness now and he actually hears. The Watcher, a man that when he when when Ultron turns around and says who who what and then the reaction of the Watcher in that moment, you talk about laughing. I was laughing at that moment because I'm like, oh, he he is in trouble, trouble. Your thoughts on this moment here, man? As uh, the the consciousness has elevated for this age of Ultron, I was kind of like confused at first. I'm like, damn, like he's that powerful that you can like hear him and like know that something yeah. else like <clears throat> that really just wow. I didn't expect that at all, but yeah, yeah it was. It's kind of funny the reaction, but we get like, to what? see. You can hear me exactly. It's like, oh no, I'm like I've been here hiding the whole time. It's like that's all of us, but it's fine. Um, but the Watcher's like in this entirely different space, and then we get to see more of him and like where he's at and his position. So I thought it was really interesting that moment, kind of eerie because like you don't expect it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was cool with all like the mirrors and the colors, mm-hmm. and again the animation was stunning. So. Yeah, it was a it was a cool moment. It was interesting. And just kind of re and tossing to you, Chris, just on this moment of the watcher. But I guess just thinking about it, the the world's quiet. There's no he he can hear the watch because literally nothing else mm-hmm. he can hear right now. He wiped out everything, so he can maybe in, uh, get in more in tune with uh, the Infinity Stones of knowledge. But your thoughts, Chris, on the watcher being like, uh, "What you you can hear me, bro? <laughs> this ain't yeah. good." Yeah, and I think it's a, a little different than 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 Thanos because he was like. He was at peace. He was chilling on, on the farm. Right. And then and then here Ultron was like, damn, now what? Like, well, I need to do some more shit. Yeah. So I, I think that's like a little mini stark difference. But I thought this was cool. This whole thing leads into some cool stuff. But this cost, talking to animation, I think they had to make a like a, a conscious choice to be like, look, we're gonna go through all these different universes, all these different um, you know, galaxies, and like like we have to make it like look different. So when you see him going like through, through the all these these glasses, like these, these like I guess realms. Yeah. You can tell like they're different. So I was like, they must have put some extra little zhuzh on that um, to make it believable. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I was like, okay, I see where this is going. Um, but I didn't know the Watcher had them hands on him though, but we'll get into that later. Oh yeah. He, uh, what did he say? You can't compete, uh, compute my yeah. will. I'm like, okay. We, like, <laughs> he didn't, he didn't said, come with that energy at first. Life. He kind of came with yeah. that energy like, oh, like, yeah. like, like, like I'm like a wizard man. of Oz. Like I'm not like yeah. a real OG. Like but then he's <laughs> like, all right. Because like, I mean, he don't want he don't want to fight at first because this whole thing right. is like I shouldn't be I'm not supposed to interfere. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it's, it was well done. The same. Hey, Michael, take the stage, man. Your thoughts on the Watcher kind of you know having that moment of the uh, Ultron uh, peeping them out. But yeah, uh, one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up, Chris, what you said uh, about the uh, like the extra zhuzh that they had to throw into this episode. That's kind of why I would have preferred, like honestly, even though I didn't finish the series, if they would have uh, pulled a Star Wars vision type of route where every single episode just looks completely different to showcase that they're in right. a different yeah. universe. Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. I would, I would have liked if they if they went that route to let you know let and also let other animators get get their play in this in, in the say so they could be like, yeah, yeah this boy. is a different episode than this because it looks it stylistically looks different as right. opposed to every episode technically having the same animation style. But yeah in terms yeah. of like uh when when uh Uatu was overheard by uh by Vision Tron like this is when th- this is when shit got real. This is like the mm-hmm. butt butt clenching moment of the episode, <laughs> where Watu was basically just like, "I've seen I've seen everything," and even yeah. me, I'm just like, "What the hell is this?" And so yeah, when he got when he got scared and, uh, and Vision kind of pulled like a horror, a horror movie moment where he like looked 
Like who's talking? And, yep. and then watch who got scared. And he clo- he like close. It's like it's like when you get it's like when you open up your curtain to get try to try to yep. have somebody arguing, and then they see you. And you're like, like, like yeah. I don't, no, I don't want no smoke. Like yeah, I, I, lo- I love that whole I love that whole moment. Like yeah, just it, yeah. it also kind of goes to show like like the levels of darkness that Marvel can go. That I feel like they're kind of afraid to go. Like. Even mm-hmm. even when like there was a moment uh, or there was an interview where they said they had an uh, episode plan where uh, they were gonna do a what if Spider Man actually became a man spider, but they were told they weren't allowed mm-hmm. to do it because it was too dark. And I'm like, yeah, did, yeah. Y'all, did y'all not see the '90s cartoon? Like, right, it, right. it goes to show like they can't they can they can go there like because this episode was kind of dark. Like I just want yeah. them to go a little bit a little bit further with the with the darkness. Mm-hmm. So you know, without mm-hmm. necessarily having to go rated all like you still be PG thirteen or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, like I wanted, I wanted to go because Ultron was scary as hell. Like I said, it was a butt clenching moment. Like, yes, sir. So yeah, like I, I love, I love that moment. Yes, I, I, I so agree with you, Michael. If this series has shown us one thing, is that that Marvel can get dark. I mean, the zombies episode of literally yeah, Falcon, uh, yeah. you know, Chris's favorite character getting split in half. You know, we have obviously Captain America getting split in half. There's blood. I mean. Doctor Strange within itself is a, a tragic episode, dark episode. So I think this show, hopefully, we're leading to more of the the darker side of the MCU. Even even, even like even like Age of Ultron, the reason I feel like a lot of people were disappointed is because I feel like it was a false false advertising. Like you think about the very first trailer for Age of Ultron, so with, great. Yeah, with the darkness of this. Mm-hmm. Mm. Be a gritty movie, and yeah. then like Chris said, Ultron's dropping poetry and things. It's like it's mm-hmm. not. This isn't what you sold me. In the movie, yeah. like it seems like they they're willing to go a little bit more dark with the animated stuff, but not so much in live action. Yeah, which is weird. The weird yeah. concept because you would think you know animation they're probably getting more like the kid friendly, family friendly oriented type of content, but that's kind of been the opposite so far, which I'm yeah. loving. But we need some of that in that live action. But going back to our mere humans, uh, Nat and and Clint as they're going to the KGB archives, uh, which was a very cool moment. A lot of little cool Easter eggs. One being the um, Red Shield or Red Guardian Shield, mm-hmm. and I and I know you guys. I think it's been flown out there on Twitter now. I don't know if this whole Charles Xavier, if that was his file, it was in in Russian. I don't know if that's a little Easter egg for X Men's uh, X Men to come, uh, as we talked about weeks ago with uh, Charles Xavier mm-hmm. may or may not be uh, in, in Doctor Strange too. Uh, but again, we see and there's a little little screenshot there again. I don't know what. Oh, what I didn't even notice. I love how everyone's like you're pointing. <laughs> yeah, everyone's I don't, like, one thousand percent. That that does not say Charles Xavier. No. Uh, <laughs> Come on. It's in Russian. It's in that Russian. That is like I'm Chester. Russian. His name is Chester. <laughs> it's a it's different like... multi-person. He goes by a different name. But uh, <laughs> but as we see the watcher not want to intervene, he's like, you almost got it. And, and Clint kind of gives up in the moment. But, uh, you know, we see that they're obviously there for Zola, who's uh, who's their counteractive program to take out Ultron. But uh, kicking it off to you, Amanda, your thoughts on this sequence here and seeing, again, the watcher just getting closer and closer to want to intervene. But uh, Nat? The hero yet again comes nice. in and doesn't give up hope and uh, finds that file. Um, I I love this scene with Nat and Clint. Again, it took like this one scene to show how amazing their relationship is. And it was very like their dialogue back and forth. Like it was very strong. And then um, the pacing was good too because you had Ultron trying to break through and then the Watcher just like hurry up and like find that file type of thing. So I really love the timing with all of that. Um, That's not Charles Xavier. Uh, Sorry. Sorry to disappoint everybody. Come on now. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I I really love this. I love their dynamic. And uh, I love Zola so much Mm -hmm. to know that he was in this episode and then what happens within this episode with Zola just made me really happy because there's so much you could do with Zola as we saw in like the Winter Soldier and in this episode. So um, yeah, I'm happy that he's kind of back and still in here in the MCU. And I, I, yes, that's what this episode showed me that he is somewhere s- still out there. And I really hope mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, we get some more of that character as well as Ultron. And maybe that's a little combo of bringing those back. Uh, but yeah. tossing to you, Chris, man, your thoughts on this KGB archive scene. Uh, and again, the dynamic between Clinton and, um, you know, Nat, you know, just like we saw in Endgame, don't give me hope. But yet she's always there picking him up, you know, and, and being that hero that uh, we know her yeah. to be in the MCU. Yeah, just showing how more whack that he is than, than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, to me, this is a great episode. I, this scene didn't really move me at all. And then to me, I thought it was kind of weird just watching the 
watching the watcher watching the, seeing, watch the watchman see, yeah. yeah seeing seeing the watcher like oh you're almost there you almost got it it felt like the little you got the cricket yeah, the, like the, the, the uh, fucking, geico commercial yeah like, exactly yeah. so like I, I didn't need it i guess it's, it's, i guess it's cool but it was yeah. just like whatever for me and then I, I see where we're getting and then it takes you know the next scene is, is, is like okay I, I understand how we got here that's cool Definitely, definitely. Michael, man, your thoughts on this sequence of these two? I mean, that was a lot of files. I, I ain't going to yeah, lie. Well, I would have been on Clint's side. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm tired. Yeah. I need right. pizza. Yeah, Let's playing. go. <laughs> Game over for me. Tap out. Uh, but your thoughts on that? Again, I, I can't uh, reiterate it enough. Nat has been so pivotal to the MCU in regards to this thing of the first Avenger with her getting low-key staff to open up the portal. Obviously, Endgame, her sacrifice there. Civil War being so integral of uh, you know getting all that. She's very integral in this MCU. MCU and I and I really wish they would have gave him some more love in her own fo- a solo film, but neither here nor there. Your thoughts on this uh, this scene here, Michael? Well, no, I, I like the scene because it was more just character building with their relationship yep. and things like that. And uh, when Chris was just like, "Oh, I ain't feel nothing for this," I was like, "Man, no heart, no heart." <laughs> like, <"Next." laughs> no. he doesn't but, cry. It's fine. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, yeah, I, but, I, but I love, but I love this whole thing, and it's, and it's also show something that you don't really see some, uh, a lot of times within media, just the fact that you have this man and woman that have such a close bond that have nothing to do with romance. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just liked seeing more of that, yep. seeing that, seeing their dynamic, the push and pull between them. And, you know, there's some, there's some moments where Clint encourages Nat. And then in this moment, there's a moment with, with when Nat was encouraging Clint. And I also thought the whole time, like, I was like, is this going to be the moment that Uatu intervenes? Cause I'm like, we know it's coming. Like we, we've been seeing it ever since really since episode four with the Dr. Strange episode, he was like, I could warn him. I could warn him. Mm. And so I thought he was going to like show up at this one point. He was like, no, the file, like the file, get the file. Like, <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, right there. We wanted to intervene in the middle yeah. of watching the episode. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love, I love, and, and plus that's more character for Uatu. So, you know, this, yep. this whole scene was just mm-hmm. more character building and I, and I loved it. And I also kind of shows, yeah, uh, somebody mentioned like, uh, Watu's not learning his lesson from what happened with Doctor. Remember, the Doctor Strange was the first one that was able to like sense him and hear him, right, right, and things like that. It's then Ultron, like it, I, at first, I was like, "Is Nat? Is Nat?" And uh, because he's kind of he was kind of close in this scene. I was like, "Are they going to hear was. him?" He was. Let me pull it up. He's literally right over the shoulder yeah. of, uh, yeah. of uh, Clint. I guess you know, with them being humans, they don't really have that uh, connection like Doctor Strange or, or obviously the Infinity War or Infinity Stone uh, Ultron. But yeah, he was he was right there. He could have, you know, hey, hey, psst, it's right, right there, uh, or pushed it off the shelf or something. Yeah, that, like that's that. what I thought. Yeah. He was gonna do, like have it, yeah, yeah, have it fall off the shelf or something. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. But he he does not want to intervene until and you just a perfect segue until he gets the hands thrown on him by Ultron <laughs> comes through and comes through. Well, that's all I say, man. This was uh, listen, man. If we can get some of this. Uh, Doctor Strange 2 is just shaping up to be something epic. I, obviously, I don't think Ultron be in the film, but just knowing the idea that the multiverse is going to be broken and what that can mean for the MCU just kind of blows my mind. But we we see that he comes in there, but we'll go back to that fight. But we'll go back to, uh, again, more character development from Nat and Clint as they wake up, uh, threaten him with the, some water to mess up his mainframe there. And he agrees to help them out. And they come up with a plan to order some pizza uh, to get those Ultrons to come there, which, again, Nat's uh, comic relief is, is so perfect in this uh, mm-hmm. this show so far but their plan comes into fruition they they pop one of the ultron uh bots with the arrow and uh amanda i don't even know where to start this scene here was just you talk about epic from the ultron bots coming in to yet again more of these random badass uh arrows by clint with the whole force field thing which i'm like we we, we need this in live action yeah and then the ultimate moment we get the, the reverse of in game instead of for nat dying it's, it's clint that moment but your thoughts on this this whole sequence of uh being in siberia I I loved it. When I heard that they were going to Siberia, I just had this big fat smile on my face because obviously <laughs> what happens in Siberia with like the Winter Soldier and all of that, just like it was awesome. Um, but yeah, Zola is really cool. And we, you know, he got into one of Ultron's bots and like that was, you know, it's just so cool. And I wish we yeah. could see more of this even in live action if this is a yeah. possibility to make it happen, you know. But um, again, the comedic timing this is the type of writing that I wanted for Nat in the MCU. She did have fun lines, but I felt like they were dumbed down. Whereas like with this comedic timing throughout this season, I think that she's just so much stronger in this and it just makes me sad. That's it. With that stuff, it makes me sad. But um, yeah, I just, I loved it. It was so cool. Again, the animation, 
you can always do more in animation. And I think they're yeah. really pushing that boundary in every single episode. Um, and I wish that Clint actually died in Endgame instead of Matt. <laughs> uh, so that's the bonus of this episode. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so uh yeah this episode's a great win for natasha Vance, basically her stock is going up i'll tell yeah. you that and uh bob chepik yeah, man you met you screwed yourself over with the mm -hmm. mishandling of that situation but uh chris man your take on this siberia siberia scene and seeing them just again just being dope as hell man and clint with these arrows these are dope yeah this is a fire scene i don't know that i needed um, Natasha to be funnier in the movies. I, I, I don't know because then like she's like a real like a Russian soldier. So like, I, like is she supposed to be funny? But she did have good lines throughout the movies. And then I think I'm looking for a fossil or whatever she said in Winter Soldier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Smithsonian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a little stupid one liner. That's fair. But then her, her sister comes along and then is like the funniest person in MCU history. So it's MCU. right. Well, then <laughs> I guess there's a lane for that. <laughs> um. Yeah, this scene is cool. This is this scene looked like a uh, Dark Knight Rises, like it's trying to get, get out of that pit. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. but yeah, I thought it was cool. These these dudes got a fucking USB arrow as far as again, um, <laughs> man. These arrows, where can we get them? Why haven't we? Yeah, seen them? exactly. Um, but I thought it was cool, and then like you know, cutting the legs off. I'm like, is that really gonna do? It? Is that enough for that? Is that um, but it was it was it was a good scene like i'm sh like animation is like it just so much time probably goes into it it's like you just gotta like yeah. really respect it and yeah. just like just like be it be in awe we just get to sit back and watch it but like these people are like probably slaving away making this shit happen for us so it's just like a moment i'm like damn this is a lot it's fire yeah man and I wish I had the shot. There's literally a shot when Clint, when he's falling down. And the, last, like, well, the last, the last shot. When it's like, yeah. it, it looks like the orange glow in the back. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was going to mention that. I was like, that, that was like the best looking scene, even in live right. action. Like, I can't even think of something in live action that looks as good as that. Like, that's so good. It's right? just so beautifully rendered. Like, I love that moment. I need, a, I need a poster of that. Like, Same. Hey, Michael, take it away, man. Your thoughts on that scene with that shot and, and prior to that shot of just seeing everything set it up, setting itself up. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this scene as well. Like, and, and kind of what you guys mentioned, like it, th this, and even with the writing in terms of, in terms of things like that, like it just goes to show, like you can still have your MCU jokes without it right. necessarily cutting the tension. Like they had, like there were well, moments when Natasha was being witty, but it wasn't like, okay, guys, insert joke, ha ha, you want to laugh? It was like, no, stop. Like I hate when yeah. they do that in yeah. the MCU. It's like, no, you can still have your humor and still there still be some tension and and, and anxiety and things like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. this episode was just like this moment was just like firing on all cylinders. Like I love the intensity of like them trying to figure out a way to escape the, the Ultron robot. Like even when you think about Age of Ultron, they had the all the Ultron bots was like they didn't they weren't scary in that moment. But in this yeah. moment they were scary. It was just like you got these humans by on these thousands of like how are they gonna manage? And then like Clint wasn't shooting out the the force field Force field arrows and all and all this other stuff. I'm like, where where were those arrows in Age of Ultron? Like they were still being uh, produced uh, in in the manufacturer. I guess they were late on the yeah. order. Back they were back ordered. They were back ordered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the chip mm -hmm. shortage. They weren't. They weren't. They, <laughs> those arrows weren't on Amazon Prime. They were. They weren't, they weren't Prime. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I love I, I love them all. And yeah, this this episode. I feel like was also like you know mentioned up uh, the apology tour from Marvel. Yeah, this was the apology tour for what if Clint died on Vormir <laughs> instead of Natasha. Like, yeah. but, the, the, but the funny yeah, thing about yeah. it is, even though I was like, yeah, it should have been Clint. Like Clint's trash. Like who cares? But because of the establishment of uh, the relationship between Natasha and Clint for this particular episode, like I thought when he was about to die, I was gonna be like, oh yeah, like finally, like Clint's dead. Who cares? <laughs> but I actually felt something. Like I was a little yeah. emotional. I was a little emotional because of what they established for clint in this episode mm -hmm. in this one episode yeah. like I, I i was like oh man not clint but if he died in the mcu i'd have been like yes clint for this, <laughs> for this, for this version of, clint, of applause yeah but this version of clint like i felt something because they actually yeah. did something with them as opposed to the mcu the, yeah. the main the, the live action mcu rather i agree i agree man again i'm, I'm hoping we get some of this uh character development in in the Hawkeye series we're we won't, we won't. Right. it's gonna we all won't. go to it's gonna all go to it's gonna all go to Kate Bishop. It will it will yeah. she's gonna yeah. steal the show. Yeah. She she will definitely steal the show and he's just gonna be there with his arrows and then just no yeah. good. Because even, even yeah. the black yeah, because we kind of mentioned it before, like even with the Black Widow movie, like all the emotional investment went to Yelena yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. Natasha Natasha was just there, but like yep. honestly take her out the movie, like 
Exactly. Nope. You could have still you could have told the same movie with Yelena. Yeah. I feel like Hawkeye is gonna be a lot of like Danny Glover, like I'm getting too old for this. Too old for this. Yeah. yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Over and over. Yeah. Yep, I, I, I hate to say it, but yep, I think that's where we're getting, sure. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but we we get some more. Um, Michael, you talked about just like one of the dopest scenes, man. I don't know how you all feel about this scene here, but we get Ultron, the the Watcher, and uh, if we can get this in live action again, I know we're not, but we we get it here. It was so dope just to see them go back and forth, and uh, my man Watcher, like you guys said, he he was he was holding back. He was you know one of those ninjas like I don't want to hurt you, but I'm gonna have to. As he goes Super Saiyan, puts out his gear. Him and and, and Vision are going back and forth. He's punching through different multiverses. We get a world where there's Captain America as as the president, and just. So much amazingness. Uh, and even this shot here, a uh, Galactus type of eating the planet. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, Amanda. Where, where do we start with this scene here? This is just uh, epicness on another level. First and foremost, I voted for Stephen Graham Rogers. For <laughs> I have approved this message. I, I did. I voted. Um, it was just so wicked to end an episode like that. Them fighting, going through each multiverse, each punch was like switching to like a different multiverse with different characters. Like I thought it was just so wicked, the transitions in this episode, especially at the end of it. Um, it w- I just want to see more of them. I want to see more of the watcher. I want to see what, you know, his capabilities are. Like, I, I really want to see more. Um, yeah. He looks really cool. Vision Tron. He looks so cool with like the full gear and everything. Yeah. But um, I really love how they show the multiverse. I love how it's mirrored and like anything can shatter within two seconds if you do the wrong thing. So I, I really love that they they visually showed that and uh, the fight was wicked. So that's so I'm at. good. You say you want a more. I'm right there with you. I'm like, uh, yeah. I'm at Kylo Ren and uh, uh, Last Jedi. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, Chris, man, we got Galactus, Ultron, Eden Planets again. No disrespect to Thanos and his 10 years of, of reign in the MCU, but I mean, my man's his, his his mind was so small. I mean, my man Ultron is becoming this giant. I mean, he's using the reality stone and, and warping mm-hmm. reality in, in a way that we've never seen before. But your thoughts on this epicness before we wrap up to the, to the finale? Yeah, no, you said it right. It's epic. It's, uh, I mean, like this episode is the best episode. Like when we talk about favorites, that's a different conversation. This is obviously the best episode mm-hmm. that they've made. I mean, and it's and it's interesting to think that this is not the last episode. So, like, is that going to be better? Can they be better? Yeah. Is this the Infinity War to an End Game where they're both just like really good and you just got to fight it out to the death? But yeah, this scene was crazy. And then like, it's like this is like one that's like full of Easter eggs. This is like I mentioned in the beginning, having to go back and watch it again because you're seeing so many different things. I'm trying to like catch on to like what universe we're in and just mm-hmm. seeing like what's happening in this universe. Yep. And it's yep. and it's so interesting that's like Disney's putting so much into or Marvel's or whatever putting so much into it, and it's like. Yeah, there, there was a Dora Milaje for like a half a second. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, you, you don't need that. Like, they like you don't even need to like hang there for a little bit. They're just like they're just telling you like scrolls for a hot second. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like we we just got that in our bag. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll stop back later. Flexing, like, just flexing. Right yeah, now, it was an ultimate flex um, and an awesome way to like bring it home. And then it, when it was done, it wasn't even the end of the episode. I was like, damn, there's more. It's crazy. But wait, there's more, <laughs> Michael. Man, your thoughts on before we get to that that finale of someone calling for some help. Uh, your thoughts on just seeing that battle between these two altered powered beings, and again, we get um, Watcher saying, "You can't even compute my power, my will yeah. of power, whatever you say." Yeah. Such a dope line. I need, I need to see this fight in the, MC, the live action MCU. Like, Michael, I need, on, like, immediate, on, like immediately, like <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and not just that, but I love how they, I love how they did put some respect on Uwatu's name. Like mm-hmm. Uwatu can throw hands and has thrown hands with Galactus in the comics. So speaking of Galactus, like yeah. Uwatu is no slouch. So that moment, he was like, "Yeah, you can't even comprehend my will," something like that. And he yeah. went full like Super Saiyan or whatever. He he morphed his. Con- I was like, "Yes." <laughs> Give me that, like them throwing hands. Like I love, I love that whole whole fight sequence. And I'm like, I'm gonna go watch it again it, yeah. after we're done after we're done recording because that thing just that so thing got so me epic. super hyped. And yeah, like even like this moment right here, seeing uh, Ultron pull a Galactus and eating galaxies and things like that to see Steve Rogers become a president. I was like, that should have been in the main universe instead of him going back to Peggy and yep. rewriting timelines and erasing her kids and all that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Whatever. Yeah. Yep. End game. <laughs> I hate, I hated his ending and end game. Uh, but yeah, that whole, but the whole thing was, it, it was, it was fire. But I will say, cause it, it did bring up a question for me. 
because as much as I love this episode and as much as I thought it was perfect and firing on all cylinders and I totally love it's like my favorite of all the eight episodes so far. The one thing about this episode that kind of made me go, and, and it's particularly with regards to this moment, that made me go, but wait, how is this possible? Because they made a big stink on Loki about the fact, like when you saw the Infinity Stones, like they used them as paperweights. They didn't, mm-hmm. they don't, they don't work outside of their respective universe. And that's the same thing that happens in the comics. You mm-hmm. leave the, you leave your universe, the Infinity Stones don't work. Absolutely. But you get yeah. to this, and this is all supposed to be canon within the MCU. Right, you, right. Get, you get to this episode, Ultron is still using the Infinity Stones in all these different universes. And I'm just like, mm. but wait, though, how is that possible? Like, they, especially considering that they did say that Loki was a direct result, or uh, this, this show is a direct result of Loki. I'm like, right, 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 right. Once he left the main universe, he shouldn't have been able to use the Infinity Stones. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is true. That's a good point, Michael. Don't know. Um, you know, we man, don't know. Yeah, I know. I guess Brian, uh, the writer and producer and director of the show, maybe you know. But I still was, love like this episode. Mentioned. I still love this episode, though. Like it's a it's a valid point, and not to make excuses question. for him. But what you mentioned earlier, as far as like how long it takes to do animation, maybe this was in production, and this you know this plot and all that was before low key, and maybe there wasn't that, that perfect handoff that we know Marvel so used to doing in regards to this ties to that and that. So you make a great point. Someone mentioned it too early in the chat too. So yeah. it is a fair point my friend i'm trying to i don't even i can't even think of it it's magic michael that's why it's, it's and I, know, uh, I, know, I know caitlin so she, she just said the tv <laughs> is outside of the multiverse but so was the watcher's realm like he penetrated yeah, the right. watcher's realm which is outside of outside time. of that yeah, is, yeah. outside of time and space and he was still able to use the stones like yeah. the, that's where they first fought it was outside of you know the multiverse Listen, Michael, we just take it. <laughs> just take it. That's what. That's why it works. Because it's Marvel and we believe in everything they do. But uh, right. that is, that's just a small nitpick. I don't, no, want, people, I don't want people to valid. get mad at me in the chat. Like, I'm like, just enjoy the episode. You can't. Yeah, I, still, I still love the episode. I, that's just something point. that popped You're into not my allowed head. to ask questions. Yeah, no. Question <laughs> this is a great point, man. And maybe season two, they'll address that. But the finale that we've been waiting for here and, and the character we've been knowing was going to appear again and, and who knows what this this character has been set to maybe make a live action debut but amanda we wrap up the finale with um the watcher's gotten sad he's alone and he has a friend out there that he didn't help but now he needs his help and it's no other than supreme strange coming out of the shadows and he, he and that's the doctor strange that we know uh, as far as the ego goes he's like i need you to say it i need your help as we wrap up this incredible episode but your thoughts on not only just this finale but what does this mean for next week are we going to see doctor strange teaming up with party thor t'challa uh, or star lord and all the Car- captain carter all those characters are going to be going toe to toe against this uh, ultimate ultron I absolutely adore Doctor Strange in this series. And after Infinity War, I loved him. I hated Mm -hmm. him in his standalone. Infinity War and up. Infinity Mm -hmm. War and up. He's a class act. And um, yeah, I think that it's going to be like a big blowout in the last episode. I think they are going to team up and we're going to see all these characters come together. And Mm -hmm. again, it's something that maybe we won't get in live action. Maybe we'll get different characters in in live action, but we're going to see these heroes come together at the end and uh, just battle it out. I think next week is going to be mind blowing. I think that it's going to lead into maybe Hawkeye or lead into multiverse of madness because this is Canon at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be massive. So I'm excited. It's gonna be madness, some may say. Yeah. Amanda. Uh, Chris, man, your thought on this this final shot here and what it can mean for next week's finale in regards to getting this mishmash of Avengers, multiverse Avengers, if you want to call them that. Yeah, I, I mean, I hated that the Watcher made that that joke, but I'm really willing to forgive that um, in this scene. But beyond that, you got you actually just got me more excited because, like, just thinking of the possibility of the last episode where everyone just does come back that we've seen. So it could be really epic. That's actually that's actually really cool. Um, because like they can't they can't give us this and then follow it up next week with something with the jokey uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what if yeah. Howard the Duck and Darcy had a child? Yeah, exactly. Lamb part two. But um <laughs> no, I think I think I think yeah, I, I got got more excited for the for the last episode. And then we'll see yeah. what it what it sets up. Hopefully not Hawkeye. Um but <laughs> 
Damn. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll Tell see. me how you really feel. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hey, man, Hawkeye, this show is going to bring, as the rumors just, out there, this, this is how Kingpin, this is how he's going to get into Hawkeye series. Yes. He's coming from another multiverse and Daredevil <laughs> and all those characters. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but, Michael, man, your thoughts on this final scene. Again, the rumors out there, and, and I would love to see Evil or Supreme Strange, uh, you know, having a conversation with the new Strange and maybe replacing that Strange. Who knows? Uh, but your thoughts on this, this sequence here and what it can mean for next week uh but i'm glad i'm glad to see supreme strange uh come back and i mean yeah, i wasn't necessarily yeah. surprised because even in the trailer you saw that final shot of like t'challa mm -hmm. captain carter gamora the avenger we still, we still haven't seen shot. gamora yet in, yeah. in this universe so like where is yeah. she i thought we saw As gamora uh no we saw we see nebula She's but we haven't seen, yeah. we haven't seen yeah, yeah. yeah i think yeah. she'll come in this one we so saw, i mean we saw two we, nebulas that's, that's what it was yeah yeah, yeah we saw two yeah. nebulas yeah. So we knew this was coming. I just, just didn't know how. But yeah. like, yeah, uh, seeing seeing Doctor Strange come back, and uh, I, I do kind of wonder with in terms of like the multiverse of madness, will we see this version of Doctor Strange interact with the so. with with the version that we know? Uh, who knows? But like, yeah, I'm excited. I'm I'm hoping, even though I know it's not gonna happen because it didn't happen with like Wandavision or anything like that. But I'm like, this last mm -hmm. episode needs to be an hour. Like I need a whole yeah. Movie length. yeah. I know. Make I up for those that episode that we lost too. Maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need more than just sure. a half an hour for this episode. Like, but yeah, I, I doubt it's gonna happen. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one for, was even shorter than normally. So yeah, yeah, it's like, it's yeah. Like right at thirty, like twenty seven minutes, not including the credits or something. Yeah, so I'm I'm right there with, but, with but you. My, but my whole thing is like, even though I know I'm I know I'm asking for too much with this one, but I'm like, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I hope this episode ends with like he gets he gets these multiversal Avengers together, mm -hmm. and they still can't take out that the, um, Thanos. They still can't take out Vision Tron, and mm -hmm. who. Who rolls oh, up to take? Who rolls up to take out Vision Tron? Kang. And he's like, Ooh. wait, you coming up in here trying mm. to destroy my multiverse? Nah, play it like, boom, Ooh, you out. Like, and then that goes to show how powerful Kang actually is within, like, yeah, within like the multiverse and everything that like that. That would be like, so dope, especially like, knowing, yeah. That yeah. placement makes sense. Ooh, that would be man. Yeah. Come on, Mike. Like, like come if on. it, like if it ends like that. Take my money, like I mean, you already got my money, but take even more. Take more. Like, yeah. Leave my hands. Let me get some more. Some Michael just to needs to that. write for Marvel at this yeah. point because everything you've come up with, we're like, wait, that sounds better. <laughs> like, why isn't that happening? You could be onto something, Michael, because again, we know how um, you know that this is kind of the, like you mentioned earlier. This is a result of Loki, so it would it would make sense to get yeah, a, like a it makes sense to me. Like yeah. Kang's whole thing is ruling the multiverse, like, and you got yeah. this creature destroying the multi, like. Nah, exactly. Kang, Kang's, Kang's not having that. Like, that's also why I was like, I, I feel like Doc, Doctor Doom needs to be in the MCU. Like, in, like immediate, like Doom, oh, yeah. Vision Tron doing Doom, Doom would be like, nah, you're not. This yeah. this world is mine to conquer. Like, so I mean, there's so many implications. Again, someone even mentioned. I think uh, CG's talking about you know Celestials, the Eternals. I mean, there's so much galactic, the galactic characters that this you would think would have some type of implications to it if this is indeed canon to the MCU, which they said they, it is. So, ooh, next week can't get here soon enough. Uh, I, I hope a uh, Kang would be something that I would be like draw on the ground, just going crazy for. You guys heard it here first, as yeah. Michael uh, mentioned Kang. Yeah. Uh, so that would be insane, but. This episode was insane. Uh, again, like we said, if Marvel, we can get some of this flavor in the MCU moving forward and not saying that MCU has been whacked by any means, but this, they're showing us that Ultron could have been better. Nat and, and, and Clint's relationship could have been better. Ah, so much, so much. So hopefully, again, this is again this is the apology tour uh, with Marvel in Phase 4 and, and we can get some more of this, this dopeness and, and moving forward. But Amanda, any final thoughts on this episode before we wrap things up? As I said, this is the best one, one of my favorites, and I'm pretty sure next week is going to top this one. So I'm I'm really excited. Chris, yeah. man, final thoughts for you on this episode and moving forward for the finale next week. Yeah, one thousand percent the same. This is a hundred percent the best episode. Obviously, one of my favorites. I got to sit down and, and judge them all at the end, but yeah, it should be a, it should be a dope finale. And um, yeah, I'm happy with that they gave us. You know, I think they. I don't know. They, I'm sure they exceeded most people's expectations of what this cartoon would be. Mm -hmm. So exceeded mine. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Michael, man, your thoughts on uh, on any final thoughts on the episode and then for next week's finale? Besides yeah. that king bomb you dropped on us. <laughs> I love this episode. This is my favorite episode out of the eight. This this and the so eight. I would say then three, then two, mm -hmm. 
Then Stop. probably four. Doctor Strange. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Then five, <laughs> two, th- then one. <gasps> Making me gotcha. cry. <laughs> yeah, Captain, the, Captain Captain, the Captain Carter episode is still at the bottom for me. Not that I hated it. I just, yeah. It ain't the worst. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the worst. But yeah, in yeah. terms of like where it ranks, know. yeah. I, I, but yeah, like I, yeah, I love this episode, and hopefully next week's episode is even better than this one. Yeah, mind like blown. I, hope yeah, I want my mind. I want to be on the uh, in my bed, like just drooling. Can't, <laughs> can't, can't move because it's just it blew my mind. Like I just need I need all the good things. I agree. I agree. They uh, they they set it up. This is the alley oop. Uh, hopefully, they can uh, you know slam it in next week with the finale and leads into you know the little winter break that we'll have with uh, Hawkeye. But this has been it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been such a fun time, Michael. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. Of course, Amanda and Chris always bringing the fire. And uh, again, guys, I cannot wait to see what Marvel has up his sleeve for the finale. But rounding things out, uh, Amanda, mm. w- what's next? Where where can they find you? What what yeah. do we got uh, coming up on the website, on the YouTube's? Mm-hmm. Where can we, where, where did all that stuff coming to us? <laughs> well, this is a blast tonight, Michael. Again, happy birthday week to you, my friend, and Thank I you. hope your hand heals up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I have Venom. I have my boy. I have Venom. Let there be carnage tomorrow night, six thirty IMAX. I'm so excited. <laughs> I just rewatched Venom a couple of days ago, and uh, it just made me really, really excited. Andy Circus is going to kill it. And uh, yeah, that's literally my whole weekend. That's all I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to do a video review. Uh, I have uh, some reviews for uh, The Guilty and uh, Titan that's up on my site right now, candidxcinema.com. And I'll probably do videos throughout the weekend. I'm having my horror marathon. Um, and yeah, you guys can find me at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hit the wrong button, but okay. <laughs> I was like, "What, what just, just?" I was like, "What just another happened?" Ultron, <laughs> another Ultron, another uh, Ultron hack there. But guys, Amanda always coming with the, with the incredible takes, even if it's a hot take. I always love mm-hmm. uh, just how passionate she is about her takes, uh, and I can't wait to see what she has up her sleeve with the contest she has lined up this week. But uh, tossing it to you, Chris, man, Mister, uh, you know, always keeping me up to date. What's the newest documentary? I know the Britney Spears. Is it this week? Or yeah, Tuesday, just yesterday, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I watched- yeah. I watched this morning. So you always coming through with keeping me up to date with that stuff, man. So let people know where they can find you and what's coming next on Taste Tape. What's <laughs> up, people? You guys can find me at Taste Tape. The stuff's in the, I almost said shit, but then I said anyway, we're going to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the information is in, is in the bio here. Please um, like, comment, and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. What is next? I am watching Venom at the same time as Amanda, but in Ooh. another world. That's Aww. crazy. That's a multiverse. Um, Maybe I'll do Venom if I, if I have time. I hope it. I mean, I think it'll be fine. I know it's not going to be epic, but I hope it's fine. It's going to be epic. <laughs> and then I just want to see what these, <laughs> what these uh, end credit scenes that internet has been buzzing about. And yeah. I just need to stay off the internet for one more day and then avoid any spoilers. But um, besides that, yeah, I don't know what documentary I'm watching next. But yeah, the Britney, I, I was going to do the Britney, but I have, I have to see if heck is crazy. Um, but there is some good documentaries that's coming up from that new Netflix, um, you know, release for all that stuff that's coming out. So look out for that. I'll keep you guys to the streets. Always, always coming with the fire, coming with the tape, uh, the taste take. But uh, Michael, man, again, happy birthday to you, my friend. Like Amanda said, hope the hand heals quickly, my friend. Uh, you know, get some some X Men, Wolverine uh, stuff going to heal quickly on you on on the hand. But we're, what's next on your wonderful YouTube? Again, you always drop an incredible content on TikTok, so I know that's constantly on rotation. But as far as uh, video, movie reviews, TV reviews, all that fun stuff, where can the people find you, man? Um, yeah, like like I mentioned, you can find me, uh, Black Gay Comic Geek, across all social media channels. And yeah, once we're done with this live, I'm going to finish editing my episode eight review of What If and have that come up, uh, upload tonight. Um, also, tomorrow, me, Fantastic Frankie, and if you guys have seen me go live, my co-host Ron, we're going to see Venom tomorrow in New York at the Lincoln Theater uh, at 9, p- 9 p.m.? So, oh, so y'all want to go at nine? That's crazy. <laughs> That's a violation. Yeah, we're going at nine. Sorry, That's crazy. crazy. You could have you you hung out with us, but yeah, Frankie's, Frankie's busy. Cool. 
Frankie's, Frankie's busy at six six o'clock. We couldn't do that one. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna see that, and then we're, uh, I'm gonna uh, record my review for that one as well. I'm hoping it's good. Like a lot of people talk about these post credit scenes at the end. I'm mm -hmm. I feel like people are hyping it up a little bit. I don't know. I feel, unless unless Andrew Garfield pulls up and like Venom, I'm like I don't I don't know what this post credit scene is that people that people are talking about. But yeah, be on the lookout for that. Also, uh, I do need to watch like I mentioned Squid Game uh foundations check up check those out also uh just recently watched uh Mortal Kombat Battle of the Realm so I'm gonna put out a review for that uh and yeah just follow me on YouTube and then also check me out on TikTok where I just do I don't do reviews on there I mostly do like nerd commentary and everything like that so if you're interested in that pull up on my TikTok and right now it's Hispanic it's Hispanic Heritage Month so I'm uh yeah. showcasing like Hispanic mm -hmm. superheroes in comics on uh on my TikTok channel so you're interested yeah, in that? Pull up. Definitely. And also, too, uh, if you want a quick plug, Michael, uh, where can they find that wonderful merchandise of yours, my friend? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I have uh, I have my own shirt, like my logo. I'm not wearing it now, but I have like my logo on the shirt. I have uh, Welcome to My Safe Gaven on the shirt and everything. Like, you get that on uh, Teespring at the Safe Gaven store. I'll have uh, Elliot put the... Actually, I, I'll type it in the uh, chat right now. Yes, sir. The, the link to my store. I, I don't even know it off the top of my head. I gotta find. I gotta find <laughs> it. So busy, he like that. Nah, Real screwed businessman right here. You're looking at it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But look, man, this is uh, this is always again uh, to our special guest Michael, of course, my amazing co-host and man and Chris. You guys are always just incredible. I appreciate you all. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna head on to see Venom too. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna uh, hit up Amanda and Chris and Michael and just you know, either thumbs up or thumbs down. Just kind of leave it at that. Uh, but again, uh, something I did see last night is no time to die. And listen, mm -hmm. that film cannot come out soon enough. That film Everybody is uh, really, Everybody really, really good. It. Really good. And I'm, this is coming from a casual James Bond fan. This this, this film is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a super uh, casual fan, too, same. so that's dope. Same. Same, man. Well, again, guys. I've never, like, I've never seen any James Bond movie. Funny I said the what? I don't really, I don't really, <laughs> what? That's Cap. That's Cap. That's Cap. That's Cap. That's Cap. That's cap. Oh. Watch no, Casino no, Royale. I've never, I've never seen any of them. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Casino Royale is the best one. And it's not because I'm not, like, I just never, yeah, I just never got around. Hey, oh, me, man. hey, that's like me in the Harry Potter world. I haven't seen a one so wait, 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 I haven't wait, seen all the We're gonna wrap it up. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. No. We're gonna end it on that note on things we haven't quite seen. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been an awesome stream. Before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to all these amazing content creators. Wish me luck on Venom, and it's not a turd in the wind. But uh guys, you guys are awesome, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Everybody.